Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, TV, film, sports, music, everything really. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, it goes PD Beats. And we are talking about Orange is the New Black, because season six recently dropped on Netflix. And we are speaking to one of the actresses on season six of Orange is the New Black. We are speaking to Shauna Hammock, who played CEO Ginger, one of the new correctional officers. Shauna, welcome to Pop Turnative. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, first off, just the. <laughs> Congratulations on, you know, landing that role. And you were amazing. You were fantastic. I watched the show with my family. We all loved you. You were one of our favorite um, new characters on the show. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. I love Ginger. She's so quirky and fun. So I'm so happy to be a part of such a wonderful show, a groundbreaking show. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to be part of it. Thank uh, you. No, absolutely. So like, t- take us through it. I mean, you auditioned for the show, but take us through the process where there's some kind of like, how, how was it? Like, how did, when did you find out about the possibility of being on Orange is the New Black? Like, take us through that process. Um, I'm also a Broadway performer. So I've done shows on Broadway. And that's originally where um, the casting office, Orange is the New Black, saw me when I did the show, The Last Ship with Sting, who was the composer. Um, and so they'd over the years called me in to audition like a couple of times over the last four years, but it was only for like a single line here and a single line there. <clears throat> and it never seemed to work out. And so I was doing a day job, you know, temping as an executive assistant, like you do in between acting gigs. And, uh, I got the audition on a Wednesday that they wanted me to come in for this character called CO Ginger. The audition was the next day. And since I was doing a day job, I had to go uh, on my lunch break. (laughs) And it was three whole scenes, which was different for me. Like normally, like I said, it was only one or two lines. And this was like an actual character. And so I go on the subway down to the casting office. There's a couple other women around, but nobody looks like me. We're all different types and shapes and sizes and colors and like all of it, ethnicities. And uh, I go in. I meet SJ, who's in the casting office. She's a casting associate. And we do the first scene. Uh, She gives me a little bit of direction saying, hey, we think this is the way they want to go with the character. Can you try it that way? So I do that. I take those notes and I do the first scene. We go on to the second scene. I do it once. Go on to the third scene. Do it once. She's like, okay, great. So it's her and a camera and me. And it takes about seven minutes. And then I go back to the day job. And I don't hear anything on Friday. And so I'm like, oh, oh, no, because TV works really fast. Like you generally find out, if not that day, the next. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't hear anything. So I was like, well, it was really fun to be an actor for three whole scenes with a casting director. Uh, Then on Monday, I'm back at the day job. And at 11.06 a.m., I know the exact time, uh, I get a phone call that I've been cast in Orange is the New Black. And so it literally was a seven-minute audition of three scenes. And that time is important to me, by the way, 11.06 a.m. on a Monday, because that was the exact same time on a Monday I got the phone call for my very first Broadway show. So for whatever reason, that like- That time, there's something- That, that time, time. <laughs> it seems to be like- You should get, a, you should get a mug <laughs> that has the- I know, this is the... like 11.06 a.m. or something <laughs> on a Monday only. And so every time a Monday rolls around and I've auditioned for something, if it's, like, if it's 11.06 a.m. on a Monday, I'm like, the phone um, gonna ring. Gonna ring? Nope. Okay, we're good. Oh man, imagine if we like schedule this interview for like eleven, but we only started at eleven oh six. It would have been meant to be anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I get the call on Monday. Uh, that's like, oh gosh, I think it was the the twenty fourth, mm-hmm. Monday the twenty fourth. Mm-hmm. I have a costume fitting the twenty fifth, mm-hmm. and then on the thirty first of July. This is last year. I was the first scene they shot of the brand new season. So literally. It was a week and a few days between wow. auditioning and, and starting on set. That's awesome. That's why I love, that's why I started the show. I want to have the conversations behind the scenes. Like I want people to watch the show and find out stuff like the 1106. Like you're not going to get that anywhere else. No, it's exclusive. nowhere else. But, <laughs> it's, 1106 a.m. 
so the one thing I find very interesting is you're, you play a CEO, CEO Ginger. You know, CEOs, yes. when you think of CEOs, and in the past season's Origins in the Black, you know, um, all serious all the time, rough and tough, you know what I mean? No, no, yeah. no BS. But you and Alvarez have a little bit of that, like, comedy in there, yeah. especially with the fantasy draft. Were you prepared for that spin of a CEO when you kind of got the part? Um, well, comedy is kind of what people cast me for. I mean, I do dramatic, obviously, but because I'm an actor, so you have to do it all. But uh, that seems to be where I'm cast most of all as, as a comedic actor. Um, and so it made sense to me. It was sort of interesting because Ginger is very nice to the CEOs around her. I mean, she's still hard. Um, she's really quirky because she doesn't cuss, which is, I just thought I was <laughs> loving that trait. Like, oh man, the weird things that we came up with, like, or that they came up with to be alternate cuss words, freight train and oh poop. And I actually came up <laughs> with Freight train. Freight, freight, <laughs> freight train. I was like, that's awesome. Um, I was like, do we want Farfig Nugent? No? Okay. Uh, like, so I would like suggest things. They took one suggestion of mine actually for the, the non-cuss word. Dagnabbit, which is my mother's cuss word. And uh, so they let me put that in instead of something else as a sort of like a, here you go, mom, there's a gift. Um, but Ginger is so quirky. Um, but the thing is, is she's still a CEO and she doesn't see the inmates at, really as people. She sees them as more as things, which is horrible to say as a real human. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a protective measure that is hers and most of the CEOs. Some CEOs just like getting off on power, but that's not her. But um, it's a job for her. And uh, she's more interested in the things and the relationships with, and with the, the, other the fan And the fantasy draft. Oh, gosh. She's like really hardcore about the fantasy draft. Very, I feel like <laughs> there comes a moment where it's just like, her and uh, the CEO who who has to eat the popcorn for the games. I forget what his name was on the show. Oh, uh, his name is Stefanovic on the show. He's, yeah, he's played so by Josh. I feel like those two, you and Stefanovic, were the only two that were really into the fantasy draft. Even Alvarez, when he like didn't become the commissioner, yeah, kind he of got booted out of being commissioner. I think the funny thing is there was two moments in the show where I laughed really hard, and it had to do with your character. So okay, cool. The first totally. episode where you're getting the notes, I don't know, like uh -huh. that that was the best. And then I don't know why. It's just like me and my sister, we have like inside jokes and certain things make us laugh that maybe mm -hmm. may not make other people laugh, but like you're like you like you go over, you're like, Chapman, come here. And like Chapman's looking around and like you like give her like the tooth. With oh the yeah, in the, in the yard. Yeah, and I'm just like and just no, just the way you're like, Chapman. Come here. And it's just like, <laughs> it was, it's amazing. But uh, so what I see is, what well, my favorite thing about Orange is the New Black and shows like Orange is the New Black is I'm a big fan, Shauna, of shows with a lot of, um, a lot of characters. Oh, yeah. And we get yeah. that with Orange is the New Black, you know, with like, oh, the CEOs, yeah. the, like so many. <laughs> So they even took out like half of the characters and we yeah, still have so many. I know. It's, it's That's interesting too. Uh, but my question to you is it seems like the CEOs that were on the show had mm. a, a bond. There was like a connection there between a lot of them. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Were you expecting that? Because I'm in theater, I'm really used to building family very quickly. It's yeah. sort of built into the nature of theater. This, like I said, is, is my very first recurring role on TV. So I wasn't, ex I kind of didn't know what to expect, honestly. I was like jumping in both feet into the fire. Let's see how it happens. Um, but I think because all, well, mostly all of the new COs were new to the show as well, with the exception of like Hopper and then Emily, who plays uh, McCullough and Nick. Uh, oh gosh, I forgot. Blake, who plays Blake. Um, and of course, Matt, who plays Lipstick. Uh, we were all new to the show and we were all coming in together. And sort of that that automatically made a bond for us because we were like, okay, we're all new and we're going to stick together and <laughs> we're going to make this happen. Um, and so I think it was just the nature of coming into a situation where all of us are new. We were a little bit outsiders. Not that they made us treat, like they didn't treat us like outsiders at all. It was so welcoming. But you you're coming into this really established vehicle and this momentum that has I millions like that. of viewers. A vehicle, I like that. Y you know, it, and it's established. Yeah. And uh, you're the new kid on the block, but you're all together. So you're the new kids on the block. So we just made ourselves our own little gang. And 
I, everybody is so sweet and nice. They're, they're lovely human beings. Even Greg, who plays Hellman, oh. he's like a passionate artist and like a lover of music. And everybody is really, really lovely as humans, which made it really easy to just connect, which makes it seem as if we've known each other forever when you're in Max all of a sudden, and we're all supposedly long-term employees of the Max facility. So. Absolutely. I'm interested. I want to talk a little bit about the Broadway um, because oh. you mentioned you're on Broadway. Uh, you've yeah. done theater. A lot of actors and actresses that I've had on the show talk about, I mean, I'd say out of like 10, six of them talk about how they started in the theater. Hmm. So my question to you is, is that, that's obviously, does that, is that something you recommend before going to do like a show doing theater or do they, is it, is it different people, like different, like different preferences depending on what people are comfortable? Like what, like why are people starting in theater and then going into TV and film? That's, I'm interested in that. Well, I think a lot of us started in theater when we were in like, excuse me, there's a fly. Um, <laughs> when we were in like um, high school or junior high. We started in theater and, and choir and f sort of found our niche then. And we maybe went to school for it, like in college or something. Um, but not everybody does. Uh, I think it starts young for a lot of us, especially for theater. Um, there's this passion of being in front of people. I know for me, I started doing theater in junior high because I was the kid that was bullied and I was the kid that everybody like hated. And so I did theater become anybody other than who I was. But I ended up finding myself instead. Like I found my true being and my true calling because of theater. Um, and so I knew that's what, I, uh, and so I just pursued it and went to school for it and went after it. Um, TV is a completely different thing. Oh, I, this is gonna sound horrible. I never did any of the classes that you're supposed to take. I never did the on-camera class and I never did, you know, the script study class and all those kind of things. The, a lot of people the, do. The, the secret's <laughs> out right away. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't train for this. But I, my whole life was training for this. Oh, you know what I mean? No. Um, sure. Because of the way theater works, because you have to build a family so quickly, because information comes at you so quickly and you have to just stack it one on top of the other and remember it forever. Like, you have to do the show eight times a week. So it builds stamina and it builds your camaraderie and it builds your ability to relate to each other. Um, I think it also, that translates into TV in an interesting way. Um, but the skill set is slightly different. Well, it's not slightly, it's, it's a lot different. Like in theater, you have to project. So you reach your energy reaches to the very back wall of the far balcony. In TV, a camera is like in your face. And so all you have to do is think something and the camera picks it up. And so there's a there's a great variance between energy and how you have to portray it out into the world or if you keep it small for, for um, TV. The voice you use is slightly different, like volume-wise, of course. I mean, the sound people on Orange is the New Black, they're like, you're in theater, right? I was like, oh, yes, is that a bad thing? They're like, no, 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 we can hear you. It's great. I was like, okay, good. That's good. Perfect. <laughs> um, because, you know, there's a tendency sometimes of whispering on TV, which I never get. I'm like, yeah. can't hear you. Can you speak up? <laughs> You're in my living room and I can't understand you. Um, so there's a lot of different <sighs> variances, I guess is the right word. But the same skill set can translate to between the two. Because you're an actor, so you're an actor, it doesn't matter where you're an actor. Either you're on stage in a theater, or you're an actor on stage in a set in, like, TV and film. Um, I'm also a professional photographer, and so that actually really helped me understand more about the TV world than I even realized. Very cool. When they, when they would change lenses, I knew if they were coming in closer or going farther or wide shot, because I understand depth of field and where you're focusing and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. And so, yeah. And so all these weird things that I did on my off time in between being an actor have come into play for being on TV. Do they ever and ask you about that stuff in like in auditions or when they're talking to you? Like, could they use that as an asset? Maybe like, Oh, she's a photographer. Does that have nothing to do with it at all? Well, you give them your resume and sometimes you put that stuff on there. I happened to do it just because I was like, I've been in Rolling Stone and Time Magazine as a photographer. Um, and I just think it's cool. You know what I mean? So I put it on my resume and also because it, it 
it shows a certain skill set. So uh, they know that just because the resume does. And if they look at it on the resume while they're talking to you and they're like, wait a minute, where, where did you do this? Or you really can do crazy tongue tricks or you have <laughs> cat sounds or, you know, all the things that are actually on my resume. Oh, uh, they sometimes <laughs> ask you to do it. And so it, it depends on the casting director and how much time they want to spend with you. But yeah, a lot of time that's just oh, man. there. Were you expecting, so I'm sure... I'm sure you un- you expected a little bit of it in terms of the reception and the social media craze, but has it exceeded expectations in terms of reception about people, you know, tweeting out and like finding on social media? Like, I'm sure that's been nuts. Yeah. Um, I had like 750 followers on Instagram. This morning I have over 2,050, which is like four days or something. You know what I mean? Not even a week yet. And I'm like, whoa, people are like, passionate about all of these characters Mm -hmm. and i've had some really horrible people tweet me and that's fine and really horrible people message me which is crazy you you kind of understand that's going to be part of the gig but really overall it's been such a huge and positive response people seeking you out it's the weirdest thing you know i've been doing this a really long time and so to have people from all over the world like from italy and norway and like australia like literally everywhere around the world seeking you out, searching you online, just so they can tell you that they appreciate your work is so fulfilling and lovely. That's and awesome. I try and respond to everybody. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm trying to be like, oh, gosh, thank you. You know, just, or liking their post because <laughs> it's been overwhelming. I feel like I've done nothing but social media like the last, since it released on the 27th. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I have 54 likes and now I have all of these things. Yeah, but it's, it's really lovely. Um, sh- it's, it's, it's interesting too because <clears throat> you see that and i've had on the show we've had like cast members from big brother and mm-hmm. they've literally have been like i go from having 400 followers to like forty five thousand followers and it's like you can't prepare i asked how you prepare for that and some of the response like you can't no there's no way to prepare for that because you you as the actor can never predict what's gonna hit and be a success for the public, yeah. for the people watching. Like I said, there's a lot of people that like hate my character, and I'm like, man. But cool. I, as That's soon great. as I saw, as soon as I saw your character, though, I was like, oh, this is a great character. Like, I, like the first scene when you're with yeah. Alvarez and you're doing the, sh- and you're balancing, str- on you're balancing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just one of those things. But I, I guess too, there's gonna be like different people. Are gonna have, and I'm telling you right now, I'm done with like you know, people say, like, oh, it's getting uh good reviews, it's getting not so good reviews. I'm done with that. If I want to watch something, I'm gonna watch it and I'm gonna think about what I think about it. (laughs) That's that's the really, I I found it personally the really interesting thing about internet and and social media and the sense of immediacy, everything is immediately accessible. Oh, yeah, like it used to be you had to go to a library to go to a card catalog to like search through something to find out about a, a whale somewhere. You know what? Now I'm like on my phone, like, tell me about blue whales, Siri. And it's just like <laughs> all of the information for all of the web. You're like, all of the information ever. Um, <laughs> and so everybody now has a, an opinion. You know what I mean? They and of course, everybody, it's your right to have an opinion. I don't think you have to seek somebody out to tell them that you're a horrible, ugly person, but that's also their right. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it, it, there's going to be people that hate the show. There's going to be people that love the show. There's going to be people that love the season or hate the season compared to any other season that love a different show better than this one, but they had to make sure to tell you that they, they loved it. I was like, but you sought me out to tell me that, so thank you. That's awesome. Have, um, have you done stand-up comedy before? No, I think that's the hardest job ever. No, because I feel no. like you're. I feel like you, you're coming on the show and just spontaneously telling stories, and there's like it. It, it, it just like it just seems natural to you to kind of put in comedy. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I'm not a subtle person in life in general. I'm not really known for being understated. So maybe you should, uh, may, maybe you should, have you thought about stand up comedy? Oh, God. <laughs> a, people, a couple of, well, a lot of people actually have asked me about it. It is such an art form that is not mine. Um, the hustle is completely different. Oh. And 
the way you structure things is it, it really is an art. And I actually admire the people that do it. I don't want to talk to you on the street in Times Square and no, I don't want to buy tickets, but you know, I, <laughs> I admire what you do because it's a hard gig. I have a friend who actually is doing stand up comedy yeah. and she does like, two shows a night every night of the week and it's like the the, wow. the one thing i always what i'm gonna so my I, the question i usually ask on a show is mis like I, I always like hearing um my guests what they think about misconceptions of industries because i think we're in we're in a situation where a lot of people just assume and think they know everything about everything <laughs> and um i, I always ask for like that. yeah like different misconceptions so what i found interesting is the biggest misconception i see is and because I'm a big wrestling fan, so I see it in wrestling, I see it in stand up comedy. All of a sudden, you see a guy like for people like me who really follow the indie scenes in wrestling, I know about a guy, and then I know he's been wrestling for over 10 years, and then he makes yeah. it to the WWE, and everyone's like, Who is this guy? I've never heard of him ever before. It's and I'm just like, instant success. Forget I know about the whole 15 years he did in the industry before that. I know. But it's an it's suddenly you're a brand new star. You're like, man, I've been hustling for so. Years. Do you think that's still one of the biggest misconceptions? Another misconception people were talking about is we had Bob Clendenin on the show, and he's an actor. He's been at Cougar Town. He's been he's okay. had a role at Dude Where's My Car. A lot, a lot of different things. And he says the misconception too is like there's a certain um, there's a certain breed of like actors that he likes to call himself. Like he's a middle class actor. You know what I mean? If he gets a lead role, he's gonna get a lead role. Awesome, but he goes oh, and get yeah. And it's just like we're not like getting the big, big. We're not getting the big money, but we're getting solid work, and we're not. It's nothing glamorous. You know, we're just middle class actors. Yeah. He's like, I don't think people realize that that exists. I think people just assume that if you're on Walking Dead, you're a huge superstar. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. What do you think about that? I'm sure you could like you agree with those two things, but are there other things about misconceptions? Um, oh gosh, let's see. I'm trying to like narrow some down. Uh, not all actors are waiters. That's one. Um, oh, I didn't think of that. Hey, that's see, like interesting. I said, I'm, I executive assist. I am not a waiter, although I know it's good money. I just didn't want to ever do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and and not all actors are struggling i mean yes there is a struggle inherent in this business because out of the million times you audition for something you probably get like three yeses out of the million you know that, what i mean that so stigma is 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 really with musicians i find like that the struggling musician that's never yeah. gonna leave i find there's a lot of people that are like but i'm doing all right because i have this steady gig down at this bar so i'm still being a musician mm -hmm. um is it a struggle in the grand scheme of the world compared to a nine to five person? Yes. Mm -hmm. But is it a struggle in yourself? That's a completely different subject. Like mm -hmm. there's a strength of character that you have to have to actually choose this gig, to choose mm -hmm. to go and be judged in a little room, reading the things that like other people wrote. And then if they say yes, you have to go and then you're cast on a TV show that's watched by 50 million people. And then that gives them permission to judge you again. And so that part never, ever changes. It's how you respond to it that changes. That's not necessarily the answer to your question, uh, but it, it, no, it, it's fine. it sort of is. Um, I'm trying to think of what other stigmas. No, there's there just there's just so many things, you know. Even like I, my sport, I'm from I'm, my my background is like sports and media, and it's just like yeah. same stuff, you know. People assume certain things, and it's like, man, that is the complete opposite of how it actually works. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's interesting, but um, Sean, I think we're gonna we'll we'll wrap up. But first off, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been my awesome. No, seriously, I like great time. I'm so um. I'm so happy that we're able to talk about your fantastic work uh, as CEO Ginger because it really is amazing. And people need to check out Orange New Black season six. Um, yes. The stage, because you said you did Broadway, so I usually say the floor is yours. The stage is yours to plug away. Where can people follow you on social media? Any cool okay. announcements coming up? Go for it. Um, let's see. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, both at Shauna Hammock, which is S H A W N A H A M I C. Uh, I actually had to change my Instagram because it was something separate. And my agent was like, no, nobody can find you that way. I was like, okay, fine. It's just my name now. Um, I am on, on Facebook at Shauna M. Hammock. Yep. 
Uh, that's my actor page. You can like me there. Uh, right now, I have something in the works that I can't really talk about uh, contractually. So once I am able to, those will all be announced on my Instagram, my social media. I also have a web page, uh, shaunahammock.com. And I also have a photography and altered book website called shaunahammockcreative.com, which um, is all of the, the photography and I make artwork out of recycled books. So Fantastic. that's something separate. Very cool. Well, Shauna, thank you so much. And we w oh, I wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, maybe we can have you on again sometime. Oh, that'd be my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for all the ever episodes, uh, the video episodes. If you want to just listen to us, you can go to Spotify or iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, Popternative is there. And until next time, this is Shauna Hammock and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.